are. <laughs> You know, and again, we're, we're, we're laughing and joking about it, but it is serious. You have, some, you have some simple tips that can give you some major improvement quickly. Did you push record? Thanks so much for joining us again today on Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. I'm happy to welcome Dr. John DeWitt back to our program today. John, thanks for joining us again. I am happy to be here. Anything I can do to help. Uh, John was uh, you know, with us on several segments with some very empowering information about dementia and Alzheimer's. Uh, we will link to those segments and all the information about Dr. DeWitt. Today, we have a much lighter topic. <laughs> Very least, much. Yeah, at least lighter for some of us. Some of us get frustrated with this topic, and that Love. is golf. You know, golf is one of those things that we take with us late into life. I mean, so many people I know, including the man in my life, that's all he wants to do is play until he's 100, you know. And it's a sport that is not treated as a sport in many cases and causes problems that will prevent us from enjoying it late into life. And you, among other things, are a golf injury specialist. So t tell us what, you know, what are the considerations to make sure we can play golf late into our golden years? Yeah, I think that the biggest consideration is that um, even the guys that play golf don't really consider it a sport. It's almost like a hobby and they don't really think about it. And they go out to the range and hit a bunch of balls or they go out to the course and, and make business deals and stuff like that. But they're not actually looking at it as, you know, that club head is spinning around you at, at 80 to 120 miles an hour at some point. And that's a lot of torquing to your low back. And if you don't have the right flexibility because you're not stretching because you don't take it seriously as a sport, then that's just a, a recipe for injury because what's going to happen is, especially if you go 18 holes, you go have some lunch, and then you want to go play another round that you didn't expect you were going to be playing. Maybe you had a cocktail or something at lunch, which happens. I know that never happens at a country club or even on the golf course while you're, you know, anyway. So that is going to get you dehydrated, and that also puts you at risk of injury. So it's really important to take it seriously. It only takes, you know, five minutes of just warming up a little bit, stretch out the shoulders, the low back, stretch out those hamstrings, because the, the lateral bending and the extension of the back, that's, that's the main thing to get enough torque in that backswing so you get the power, but also a safe uh, swing so that you don't put yourself at risk for injury. And it'll give you more consistent swing, too. Well, and we talked about off camera, you know, we, we do a lot of uh, programming on improving your relationship on Second Act TV, you know, we're starting over again. So what I want to like focus on is starting over the way that you think about golf, you know, really improving your relationship with your golf clubs and what, what, did you, what you said, you know, love, loving your balls. <laughs> yeah, you got to love your balls and, and your club. Yeah, That's again, we are... <laughs> You know, and again, we're, we're, we're laughing and joking about it, but it is serious. You have, some, you have some simple tips that can give you some major improvement quickly. Right. Um, one of the main things is when you go to the range and you hit balls, you want to take one minute per ball. Because I know a lot of people, it's like a machine gun out there. You get a big bucket of balls and you only got a certain amount of time because you're at lunch break or something like that. And you're just whacking away like crazy. And that's not really going to help you. You need to, to make sure you're doing your, your breathing, relaxing, focusing on the ball, make sure you have the, the proper stance and everything and really focus on what you're doing. But 60 seconds per swing, and that way it's going to minimize that, that repetitive injury that you could be doing if your swing isn't where it needs to be. That's interesting. One minute per – okay, that seems so slow. I know. Well, actually, a lot of people think that sounds pretty quick. I'm probably doing that already. But if you time yourself, I mean, it's probably 20 seconds a ball, if that, because you're just smacking it and then rolling the ball back and, and just going. And I mean, personally, I've been there myself. And the, and the frustrating thing about golf is it's so um, forgiving. I know a lot of people don't see it that way, but meaning that you can go out on the range. And I remember personally, I was out, my, my cousin actually was a, a pro golfer for a little while. So that was kind of a neat, my claim to fame. I was nowhere near anything like that. But um 
you can go out to the range and hit it. And I remember I was out hitting, hitting it and literally was hitting the ball over the back net of the range. I mean, it was crazy. I was like, oh, wow, I'm a pro. I'm killing it. And as all golfers know, the next day I show up and I'm like, well, what happened to that swing? Because it was nowhere to be found. So the, and the point of that is that if you don't have the best golf swing, you might play great one day, not great the next day. And that adds to your frustration. And so you're always chasing that perfect swing that you were like, where was that? I, I was able to do that. So it must be good. And I have to be able to do that. And people tend to overtrain because they're not stretching enough. And then that, that puts you at risk of injury as well because you're just not it, – it's kind of like the analogy of walking with, with a rock in your shoe. You can still walk. and You're not doing it very well, but you're still able to. But if you're doing that like with a bad swing, years and years and years of playing with a bad swing is just ultimately you're going to have an injury and not going to be able to play anymore. And that's one of the worst things ever is to – plan out your retirement. And when you retire, you're like, I'm going to go play all the great courses over in Hawaii and everywhere else. And then suddenly you're not able to because you've been playing with the wrong swing and improper biomechanics. And that that's extremely frustrating. What what do you see as a, as a golf injury specialist? What injuries do you see that are most common in, you know, for the 50 and over that could easily be prevented? Mm-hmm. A lot of time, it's um, it's a lot of wrist injuries, a lot of low back injuries, and a lot of uh, hip hip injuries. So with the with the wrist injuries, what happens is when you're coming through on the golf swing, they're they're snapping their wrist, I'm trying to see if I can see. So so I'm pretending like I'm holding my club. And you're coming down and and you've got that club lagging behind your hands, but then they snap it through at the last minute to kind of close the door, so to speak, on, on the club face. And when you do that over and over and over again, you're really snapping those wrists, and that can cause wrist and forearm and elbows in, elbow injuries. Now, they, they have the injury golfer's elbow, and that's actually from um, tennis elbow is the outside part, which is technical is the lateral epicondyle of the, of the <laughs> joint. Oh, but, no, you're just showing off. I know. But all these multiple, <laughs> multiple syllab- syllabic – anyway. So, um, But the golf injury is the inside part of the elbow because you're doing that swing and you're going back and – so one of the things is you can a real simple solution to that is to strengthen the um, flexor to extensor um, ratio. This should be a five to four ratio. And if these muscles aren't strong enough, then that's going to cause an imbalance and, and put you at risk for a wrist injury. So you get a rubber band. I don't have any. I wish I did. You get a rubber band and put it around the very lower, like down on your fingertips. And you're like a little flower, bl- flower bud. And then you go out to a claw. Oh, okay. Like no, I can, I can totally imagine that. And you've that. got to try to keep your fingers bent because that's going to really work on those extensor muscles. And you do it till it starts burning and then you just keep doing it. And, and, and just any rubber, kind of a tight rubber band that allows I you to... I it's a number 32 is uh, at Home Depot or something like that. You can go get the number 32 uh, rubber band and that, and that gives you enough resistance. I've it, never seen that. Okay. Yeah. We, all, we also do that with people that have carpal tunnel in the office and it okay. helps a lot because that's also a, a muscle ratio uh, issue. So the wrist is one of the main ones. And then the low back, obviously, if you remember um, Tiger when he was really, really good is when he was a little bit smaller and and you're able to really basically tie yourself up in a knot and you build all those G-forces up when you're like really torquing yourself and you get that really wide swing arc and that's where you get all your power from. And that causes issues. I believe he's actually had back surgery too which is unfortunate, but a lot of golfers do have back surgery, especially in the low back, because they are torquing their low back so much. And so it's important to do um, some twisting exercises to, to warm up that low back before you start golfing so that you don't hurt yourself. And uh, any, any simple ones to suggest that somebody can just... A real them? simple one that sounds... Uh, well, I've got, a, I've got a couple. One of them is a lot of people, you just put the golf club behind your back and you just kind of twist one way as far as you can and twist the other way. So just go back and forth like that, just just for like a minute, and make sure you're breathing and drinking enough water. The hydration is important too, and that I think is one of the main reasons that people do get injured. They're out in the hot sun, they're having a beer or something while they're playing, and that can cause you to, to get your muscles to get a little tighter, and they don't have quite the uh, flexibility that they need. That puts you at risk of injury. Um, you can also do um, a regular twist where you grab your hands like this and throw your arms behind you and you really like snap and go back as far as you can, which sounds kind of scary. And then you spin all the way around to the other side and you do that. We, we recommend a hundred times a day. You turn your head and everything. And what that does is it, is it, the torquing opens up the disc in the low back and that's going to help take some of the pressure off those nerves and that's going to help the muscles to fire better as well. Okay. So these are the things that you should just absolutely do every, before you play. Yeah, I mean, it only takes a couple minutes, and if you're embarrassed about it, then do it out when you're getting your stuff, your clubs out of your car, and just do that, do it then, and then, and then show up. 
you know, that that's funny that you bring that up because I'm wondering if that's what it is. It's like embarrassment. Yeah, I, I mean, and like you're too cool to stretch. Right. And the thing is, too, I think that you could use this for the I know how the golfers think because they're just like, I want to have that extra advantage that people don't know. So if you want to get that extra couple strokes, you know, get that off your score to do a little warm up. And, and before you get to the club, even if you want to and your buddies are going to be like, oh, my God, what happened? You're, do, you're doing awesome today. And be like, oh, I don't know. I, I'm just having a good day. Yeah. I mean, unless you care about them, you can tell them that you're stretching and maybe that'll help them out, too. But. But yeah, it's uh, it's really important, and I think that pride has a lot to do with it. And people don't want to act like they have to stretch because it makes them feel like they're old or something. But if they really want to play in their later years, they need to make sure they're stretching. Yeah. Well, John, I wanted to have this conversation with you today because uh, you know, I mean, in my own life, and you know, so many other women, and of course, there's tons of women golfers as well. But right. there's so much time invested in this that um, you know, when I found out you were a golf injury specialist, I thought, you know, I, I want to get some of this information out for no other reason than maybe just get somebody thinking differently. That uh, you know, this could really change my relationship with golf. <laughs> It's very um, important. Yeah, and, and of course, we'll link to your book and to all the information. And, uh, you know, if you, if you, anybody uh, watching has questions, specific questions, leave, mm -hmm. them, leave them in the comments below because we'll be doing a lot more programming with John. And if this is, if this, uh, topic is of interest to you, you know, let bring on the questions. <laughs> uh, and maybe we can even do some uh, simple stretching demonstrations that are specific, you know, for our, uh, more vintage audience. <laughs> John, before we close this out, do you have any last minute, uh, last minute piece of advice? I think the easiest thing would be just to drink the waters. I mean, you don't have to, if you're not going to stretch because you just aren't going to do it, just make sure you're drinking, uh, ha have you a little like liter of water or a, or a gallon jug of water and in between each hole, if you're having your cocktail, have, have a little glass of water too, to help balance it out. And that'll help you play better too. Yeah, and beer doesn't count for water. It's, it's, no, it's just because it's wet doesn't make it water. <laughs> John, thank you so much. And we will, of course, link to all of your uh, information. And we'll see you next time on Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. Thank you. Bye. Thanks again for watching. Before you go, please take one second and subscribe to our channel buttons right over here. And for more information about staying fit after 50, please visit our website, secondact.tv. See you soon.